upon a time, there was an angel watching over a peaceful village, but the demon always wanted to take over it. To control the village, either one of them needs to cast a spell at sunrise. The angel came first and cast a spell. If the spell works, all villagers will live happily as usual. But if the spell fails, the villagers will lose their temper and the demon will take control. On the next day, the demon will cast spell first. If the spell works, all villagers will fall asleep and the demon will remain in control. If the spell fails, the villagers will wake up to expel the demon, and the angel will take over the village. This is a sort of process, depending on what happened at sunrise. On each day, the village is either controlled by the angel or controlled by the demon. We can go from the angel to the demon and back to the demon, from the demon to the angel and back to the angel. So just one of two kinds of domination, all we call states. Now, we know that the angel has 90% chance of success when he gives the spell and 10% chance of failure. And for the demon, it's 60% versus 40%. For example, if the village is currently controlled by the angel, then it has 10% chance of being controlled by the demon the next day. But at this very moment, what happened yesterday doesn't change the probability of tomorrow's days of event. More precisely, the state of yesterday today and tomorrow are independent. So this process has a short-term memory of only one event. If the process keeps going on, it will lose the memory of the preceded event. This is what Markov property looks like, which is described as memorylessness. In other words, the probability of each event in this process depends only on the state attained in the previous event not on any other event that preceded it. Then, what is a Markov chain? We know that a stochastic process is a statistical model we use to make predictions. Suppose a stochastic process consists of a sequence of possible events that happens in discrete steps, such as time, sequence, or trials, that the model can only be in one state at each step and it also satisfies Markov property. Then, this is a Markov chain. Basically, it is a combination of probabilities and matrix operations. The Andrew and Demon model has two states with four possibilities. We normally describe it with a transition diagram. Each arrow represents a movement from one state to another, and the number on the arrow represents the probability of this movement. But what if there are three states? Let's consider an ideal city, the weather of which changes following the Markov chain. Suppose there are only three types of weather, rainy, sunny, and cloudy. And the current weather condition only depends on the day before. The transition probability of each movement is given in the transition diagram. As for the first day, suppose the probability of three states are already fixed, say 60% or 0.6 for rainy, 20% for sunny, and 20% for cloudy. So what's the likely weather of the next day? To see with what chance it will go to each state, we write down the given information as a tree there is probability with 0.6 to rain on the first day. From the transition diagram, if it's rainy today, there is a 50% chance that it will be rainy tomorrow, 20% that it will be sunny, and 30% that it will be cloudy. So the probability of rain on the second day is 0.6 multiplies 0.5, which is 0.3. Likewise, the operations on other conditions are implemented we sum up the respective probability of the same outcome. Then we obtain the probability of each state of the next day. Now let's put this data into a matrix. On the left is where the state comes from, and on the top 
is where the state goes to. Notice that each row sums up to 1. This matrix is called the transition probability matrix, denoted as P. The operation process is just the same as those in the tree diagram, which is equivalent to multiplication of matrices. S1 multiplies P equals S2. Here, S1 represents the probability of each state at the beginning. We call it initial state distribution, and we can find the probability of subsequent movement from the transition matrix, P. Applying it to the process, we can get the probability of the second day from the first day, which is the first step, and get the probability of the third day from the second, which is the second step. What if there are more steps? And it has only three branches or states. Imagine four branches, five branches, or even a hundred branches on it. Markov chains have many useful applications, such as physics, chemistry, language recognition, statistics, and even music. Markov chains are often used in automatic generated music by AI. Here's a clip of the song that is car. This song was automatically composed by Flow Machines, which is an AI created by researchers at Sony. And here it goes. So today we have talked about some basic facts of Markov chains. Hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. It turns me on. Good day, sunshine.